Spiderhead is an ultra-modern prison that resembles more of a hotel. This is our science, science, Jeff. Or making the world a better place. In this facility, inmates live under a more relaxed regime, have the right to take walks, interact with each other, and have the opportunity to reduce their sentences and receive bonuses. But it all comes at a price. Spiderhead carries out medical trials, and not all of them are harmless. To be fair, it must be said that all experiments are voluntary, and each inmate has the right to refuse and return to a standard cell in another prison. Ray, one of the inmates, sits in a chair in front of a mirrored window, and Steve announces the start of the experiment by injecting a substance into Ray's bloodstream. Just a minute later, they administer the first dose of the drug to the subject and begin reciting simple jokes, causing Ray to burst into hysterical laughter. When the jokes are replaced by grim facts, the subject's reaction remains the same. Ray continues to laugh hysterically. Another morning in Spiderhead is no different from the previous ones. Inmates are awakened by a loudspeaker and their names are immediately announced for participation in the experiments. Steve inquires of Jeff if he's willing to try the new N40 compound on himself, which no one has ever tried before. And the guy readily agrees to participate in the experiment. In addition to the test drug, another one is administered to enhance the speech centers of the brain. This allows Jeff to describe his state in great detail, mentioning the smallest details. Returning to the Spiderhead compound, Jeff meets Lizzie and tells her about his walk today. Unfortunately, he can't recount everything he saw because after taking the substance that enhances vocabulary, a side effect occurs. Jeff can't say even a few words. The only thing the guy remembers is that everything that surrounded him during the experiment, whether it was flowers or factory pipes, elicited the strongest feelings of love and admiration in him. In the evening while sitting in bed, Jeff recalls how he ended up in prison. He and his friend decided to go for a joy ride at the party, and the intoxicated Jeff took the wheel. The next day, the end for the trials, now called Cupid, continue, but this time Jeff is not alone. Heather, a bold girl who changes her mind about her partner after just a few seconds of drug administration, is invited to join him. The couple's conversation lasts only a few seconds before they cannot resist and engage in intimacy. They don't care that they're being observed and filmed as the substance completely disconnects their minds from their internal barriers. The process concludes with the young people confessing their love for each other, which delights Steve, and he instructs his partner Mark to closely monitor the subjects to see how they behave when the effects of the substance wear off. The couple feels awkward after what happened and tries not to talk to anyone about it. Jeff continues to spend his free time with Lizzie, not telling her about what happened during the experiments, and he avoids encounters with Heather. The next day, they administer the same Cupid to Jeff, but this time in a double dose, and instead of Heather, an older woman is in the room, whom sober Jeff looks at with disgust. However, as soon as the substance enters his bloodstream, he engages in love with her. After this experiment, Jeff asks Mark to remove him from the kitchen where they work together with Lizzie because he feels uncomfortable continuing to interact with his girlfriend. Steve brings Jeff into the laboratory, but this time he is on the other side of the glass. Steve shows Jeff that both of his previous partners are in the experiment room. The supervisor offers Jeff the choice of which girl he is willing to administer the substance that induces intense fear and pain to, but Jeff cannot choose. He is indifferent to both of the girls and he cannot wish harm upon them. In the end, they simply release the girls, canceling the experiment. Having the right to another Friday walk, Jeff calls his girlfriend who was with him on the night of the accident, but once again he only gets the voicemail. In the evening, Jeff spends time with Lizzie, arranging a small Christmas surprise for her. When Jeff finds himself in the familiar chair in the laboratory, he sees Rogan in front of him, a massive inmate covered in tattoos. Jeff recalls everything that happened with the girls in the previous days and refuses the experiment. Nothing happens, and the men are simply released after a couple of minutes of silence. Jeff realizes what has just occurred. He and Rogan were partners with one of the female inmates, and she was supposed to choose which one of them would receive meds. Bursting into Steve's office, Jeff confirms his suspicions upon seeing Heather there. Furthermore, the doctor does not even argue with the inmate. On the contrary, he shows him a diagram of who is supposed to get close to whom under the influence of the drug. In response to Jeff's complaints, Steve reminds him that being in Spiderhead is a privilege, and if he is not satisfied, he can transfer to a regular prison, albeit without hope of early release. 
Understanding the hint, the next time Jeff sits calmly in the same room as Rogan without any hysterics, Steve sends Mark on a weekend break, advising his friend to enjoy his time on the mainland. Steve himself decides to take the Cupid to experience the ecstasy he had only seen in his subjects before. The experiments continue and Steve warns Jeff that they will have to administer it dark in flocks to the girls, as a certain committee demands the purity of the experiment. Jeff tries to explain that he does not wish for anyone to experience the effects of this substance regardless of his feelings for the girls. However, Steve remains adamant and reminds Jeff of all the privileges that he enjoys by cooperating with them. Not wanting to go back to a regular prison, Jeff agrees to administer darkened flocks to Heather. Heather begins to cry and panic, but the management calmly records the data listening to Jeff's comments which do not contain any hint of romantic feelings. The experiment's goal is achieved and Steve plans to conclude it, but an error occurs and Heather goes out of control. She gets hold of a sharp object and frees herself from the torment caused by the darkened flux. While Steve and Mark are busy with Heather, Jeff notices the lost keys belonging to the supervisor and finds a notebook with records of upcoming experiments and a lottery ticket with the same numbers as the names of the meds being administered. Seeing that Steve is no longer behind the glass, Jeff manages to lock the safe and toss the keys back so that the doctor does not realize that his secret is exposed. Steve warns Mark that if anyone finds out about what happened to Heather and he has to answer for it, he will drag everyone who participated in the experiment down with him. Lizzie participates in the experiments for the first time and the first thing they administer to her is dark in flux. After experiencing it, she meets with Jeff in a secluded place and shares her feelings with him. Lizzie confesses that she is not sure if Spiderhead is better than a regular prison with the strictest regime. In turn, Jeff also opens up to his girlfriend and confesses that on the night of the accident there was not only his friend in the car but also his beloved girlfriend who did not survive the ride. That's why he willingly undergoes the trials on himself, hoping to somehow atone for his guilt. The candid conversation between the two of them leads to them spending the night together. Steve quickly deduces the close relationship between his wards and decides to use this connection for his own purposes. When Jeff arrives for the next experiment, he learns that today he must either agree to administer Dark Influx to Lizzie or leave Spiderhead. Jeff refuses, but the doctor gives him a chance to postpone the experiment until the morning. When he meets the defiant young man again, he is armed with Lizzie's personal file. It turns out that the crime for which the girl is serving time is so terrifying for her that no amount of Dark Influx can make it worse. Steve watches with pleasure as Jeff adjusts the dosage scale to the maximum. However, it quickly becomes apparent to him that Jeff intends to experiment on him, not on his girlfriend. Mark, realizing that he has also fallen into Steve's trap with the inmates, decides to rectify the situation and hands the remote control to Jeff. The inmate receives all the necessary information from Steve and persuades him to open the main exit so that he and Lizzie can leave the prison. But the manager grabs the remote control and administers the maximum dose of dark influx to the girl, causing her intense suffering. He then smashes his cell phone to prevent anyone from canceling his command. The couple manages to free themselves from the effects of the meds and run out of the laboratory. At the same time, Steve announces over the loudspeaker that because of the fugitives, everyone else will be sent back to prisons where their comfortable lives will come to an end. Jeff and Lizzie become the targets of a manhunt. Dozens of hardened criminals, including the massive tattooed Rogan, plan to deal with the couple who deprived them of all the privileges of the facility. Steve tries to escape with the meds because police boats called by Mark are about to approach Spiderhead. Steve manages to leave the base and take off in a small plane before the police arrive, but since his remote control is shattered, meds are injected into his bloodstream in massive quantities. Another release of Cupid induces admiration and the man steers the plane towards a tiny rocky island, seeing it as a paradise. Mark on the police boat watches as his former boss circles above the sea and then crashes into the rocks. Jeff and Lizzie hijack a boat and manage to sail away before the police arrive. Happy and free, the young couple regrets only that Steve did not invent a substance that could induce self-forgiveness. And that's how the movie ends.